IT people of Reddit, what are some of the funniest questions you've gotten? Had a lady call me over to her desk because her mouse was apparently behaving strangely. I got there only to discover she was using it backwards. I also had a lady complain that her laptop mysteriously shut off on her. Got to her desk and found out she hadn't plugged the power supply and thrown it in the trash because it was in her way. I used to work at the Geek Squad. A woman came in with just the monitor and said that she couldn't get an application to run, and requested that I fix it for her. When I told her that she needs to bring the tower or the rest of the computer, she refused to believe me and requested a different opinion. I can't log into my computer. What did you guys do to it? She wasn't pressing enter after typing in her password. Yep, it's always our fault. I will always remember this one user who phoned to complain that they could no longer log into their bank account online. Turns out they had changed their internal domain account password and were convinced it would propagate to all their external accounts. Hotmail. Bank. Facebook. Yes it was as recent as that. If only we did have that much control. If only. Also worked with someone who, every couple of weeks would call me to reset her password. Because I forgot my password. The calls finally stopped when I set her password till I forgot my password. I hate when people ask me to come fix their internet explorer and I get there and their issue is. User. I can't log into Facebook. Me. That's not a work related site. Can you log into the company website? User. Yes. Me. Then there is no issue. We do not support your access to Facebook. Get back to work. Goes back to office and browses Reddit. Yes. Hi. I have this nasty habit where I'm typing and I want to press the A key. But I hit caps lock instead. Now. How do I go back to normal case? I'll press the button again me cringing. Hoping I didn't misinterpret the question and insult the guy. Okay. Thanks. Working at Best Buy someone points at a speaker and asks so how many gigs is this? This one goes to 11. All of these are 100% things I've had happen to Emmy, not second hand. 1. I had someone ask my why the mouse wasn't working right. Went up there and she was holding it upside down. Like the cable was coming out of the bottom. Up was down down was up. 2. I had someone tell me the computer was making a loud beeping noise. Went up there and the fire alarm was going off. 3. Had someone tell me their computer wouldn't turn on. She neglected to tell me the building didn't have power. 4. Had another technical person ask me if they could ping a device that isn't turned on. I typically consider myself tech ignorant. But after reading all this I feel pretty accomplished in my meager computer skills. After a while you learn that it's not the stupid people. They're okay as you can show them something and they will generally not understand why or how. But they won't make the same mistake. The real idiots you get. Like the ones in here are they people who just plain don't even try to understand. I work at a law school with lots of senile elderly professors who really don't know how to work the technology. My favorite quote of all time. Is this the internet? Take me back to the thing with the doohickeys. I spent several minutes trying furiously to figure out what he was talking about, and out of frustration, finally closed everything and gave up. Turns out the thing with the doohickeys was the desktop. Nice one. Once I had a user call me up and tell me his computer was possessed, I walked into his office, and found him and another user watching Microsoft Word. He would start typing something normally, and then random words would pop up in his paragraph. Even I found it a little odd. I kicked them out of his office so I could drop my all-knowing IT god act, and look confused and click on things as we do in this situation. It wasn't long after that I noticed a little dictating note in the corner of the screen. Seems they somehow turned on the microphone, which had never been used or calibrated before, and as they talked it did its best to figure out what they were saying. Thus sentences like Fox Staples Todd selling jab were popping up where the cursor was, and the more it happened, the more they talked. I turned the mic back off, called them back in, and let them know I had exorcised the computer. Thank god I'm not the only one who shoes everyone out of the room and confusedly poke at crap when I have no clue what's wrong. I worked in a place where most office workers had dual monitors, with the desktop extending onto the second monitor. Somehow, one lady's settings reverted back to a single image, so she had two monitors displaying the same image. 
She called in a panic, asking us if she had been sending multiple copies of emails to people as a result. But not kidding. Lots of dual monitor users where I work. Someone had an all black background and asked why only one monitor displayed yet they were both turned on. I dragged the mouse to the other screen and saved the day. I had a library patron come up to our tech help desk today asking if I could show her how to factor a polynomial. I said we don't typically do that kind of thing here. Her response, well, it is a help desk, isn't it? Tauche salesman. I ended up helping her out. A boss at work calls every unknown noun a world. I get calls like when I click on the computer world. All the little worlds are gone or my email world isn't working. I kinda like it. Lives in his own world. My mother doesn't understand the concept of minimizing windows. She'll call me and say I don't know what happened. I was typing my resume and now it's gone. It just disappeared. And Microsoft Word is chilling down in the taskbar. Microsoft Word chilling in the taskbar gave me an amazing visual. I try not to be a dong to people who don't understand technology. It discourages people from asking questions and learning. But the best thing I got is the customer shoved a credit card in her floppy drive when she tried to buy something online. I work for comp repair at Staples. Six years in tech support. Two memorable calls. 1. PC isn't working properly. 20 minutes of troubleshooting before the customer mentions that the power supply had caught on fire the night before. 2. Customer's details are confusing me. I ask if she is talking about a phone jack or power outlet. She responds, I don't know, I'm not a technical person. I had someone call me once while the computer was currently on fire. I told him to put it out. He asked me to put it out. I was at an ISP so I said no. He asked for a supervisor. No problem. How do you spell like config? Asked by my network administrator. He was fired later that day. I work in server support, had a guy call on the 2nd of January of this year and say we think we're suffering some from Y2K issues. He had a lady call in and say I know someone is hacking my computer because when I turned the monitor on, it said auto adjust in progress. My favorite of all, when I was doing desktop technical support, I had a guy call in on some issue, and I helped him out with it. During the small talk at the end of the call, while I'm updating my notes, he was explaining to me how great of a customer he was, and that he had spent a lot of money with our company. The conversation went like this. Guy, yeah, I bought this computer, and one of your printer scanner combos, and I went ahead and bought 10 ink cartridges for the printer, because I use them so fast. Me, thinking that this might be a sales opportunity. So, what exactly are you printing with all those cartridges? You might be better off with a laser printer. Guy, well... I run a cell phone tower construction business. I've got crews all over the nation. Every week, at the end of the week, each crew leader emails me their team's time cards in word format. So, what I do, is I print them out from all of the emails. Then, when I have all the time cards printed, I put them in a stack and scan them in, so that I can keep track of all the time cards for that week in one single word file. Me. Okay, and you're keeping the paper copies for record keeping purposes? Guy. No, I shred them. Again, in laptop support. A lady called and said I just took this laptop out of the box for the first time, and it won't turn on. So, I ask her if she's plugged it into a power outlet. Her response, I paid a lot of extra money for this computer to be wireless. Second favorite, working at Walmart, nights, as a part-time job for supplemental income, a group of three thuggish black guys come in with their sneakers, white tees, dreadlocks, gold teeth, etc. Think rapper stereotype, I'm not racist, only descriptive. So, anyhow, they're all milling around on the networking component style, looking at wireless routers, cable modems, wireless adapters, etc. I asked them if they needed some help, and they quickly said no, like they wanted me to just go away. So, they stood there a little longer trying to figure out what they needed with confused expressions on their faces. So, I let them have a few more minutes to themselves, and walked back over and said if you just tell me what you're trying to do, I'm sure I can help you. So, the lead guy, or the head guy or the speaker for the group or whatever, 
He looks left, looks right, makes sure no one's listening, and then leans in and says we trying to hijack the internet. I asked more questions and realized that they were trying to steal Wi-Fi from their neighbor. I showed them what they needed and told them to come back if they had any problems. I could go on 4 hours with this crap. Please do. The last one was hilarious. Working help desk. My desktop looks different. Can you set it back to how it was? Sure. I can do that. In what way is it different? I don't know. It's just different. Dot. I'd need to know what's changed to know what I'd need to reset. Can't you just set it to what it was before? This went on for 5 more minutes of me trying to extract exactly what was different and getting nowhere until she finally got tired of how slow I was and hung up on me. Yes sir, we back up your user profile after every change. Please log out so I can restore it. I am not in IT, but this is a good one. Our old office fax machine spit out the original in the front of the machine after scanning it. We got a new one, which spit out the original at the back of the machine. The first time a co-worker used the new machine she placed the original in the document feeder and hit the fax button. She saw the original get pulled into the scanner, but didn't see it come out the back. She came running into my office saying, I have made a terrible mistake. I have faxed the original. I swear this is true. Dude, I think we worked at the same place. This was probably 89 but I had a receptionist who thought the fax machine rolled up the paper really tight and sent it through the funnel line because the fax spit out the paper behind it. Yeah, there was like 5 years of faxes back there, behind the cabinet. Why can't I print anything, twice in a week, from the same person? Because they'd arranged everything so the chair would roll over the USB cable and unplug it. Printers. Bay novel IT personnel. I'm thoroughly convinced that heck is nothing but a big room in which the walls are lined with printers and fax machines for a large company. And you're the only IT guy. Shudder. Worked in a retail store and had a middle aged lady come up to me and ask me if she were to put more songs on her iPod. Would it get heavier? Because, you know, she wanted to run while listening to music and didn't want it to weigh her down. A few weeks ago I had an old guy come into the help desk asking for help with his old magnetic tape answering machine. It wasn't recording messages, and he claimed that someone had hacked it by playing some kind of funny noise into the phone while it was recording a message. I explained to him that's not how that would work, and I asked him how long he'd had the machine. He said 15 years. I know that's a long time, he said, but it's really reliable machine. I've even used the same tape for 10 years I told him he may want to replace the tape, since it had probably worn out, but he gave me a knowing smile and said no, that means that they win. I was a work study student working teach support for the university. I get a call saying that a teacher was trying to play a movie through her newly purchased laptop, but it didn't work. I ran through basic troubleshooting techniques. 1. Is it connected? If so, describe the connection. It was good. 2. Press win plus P. It was outputting to the projector. 3. Did you select the proper source? The projector can switch between about 6 different sources. Yes. 4. Did you put the movie in? It won't fit. What? I try to put the movie in, but it won't fit. At this point, I am befuddled. I ask her to describe the movie. A flat disc shiny on the bottom with the logo on top. Sounds like a normal DVD. I can't think of anything I can do over the phone so I tell her I will be right over. Grabbing the university's test DVD on the way out, I run over and find her standing in the front of the class with a laser disc. Needless to say, nothing will support that. I tell her, and she pats my arm in a grandmotherly fashion and says, I figure that might be too new for the university. I brought a tape. She then pulls out a VHS version and then exclaims, This is too thick to fit. Ignoring the that's what she said from her highly amused class, I explain that both formats are older than I am, and are not standard in the classroom. To play a VHS tape, you need to request a machine from the library because the university owns so few. I then show her the test DVD and put it in her laptop. It begins playing, and since she did not have a DVD of the intended film, she cancelled the class. I hate these types too. We recently got rid of all the VHS players and all the podium systems, installed in 90% of the classrooms. Teachers were absolutely livid that we got rid of their format of choice, 
Every time I calmly explained that supporting the VHS players was becoming too costly, but the multimedia hub had a service that would copy VHS to DVD for them. Not a question, but amusing little story. My company has been dealing with a barely functional terminal server that the customer has been putting off upgrading. They contract us to manage their desktops, servers, network, etc. So we get calls about it almost every day. It's loaded with malware, running slowly, etc. My boss and another tech were looking at it, and they found 14 gigs of P. What's worse is my boss couldn't delete it because there were people looking at the P while he was trying to delete it. He ended up forcing users to log off that had those files open and then deleting them. When I worked for Comcast I showed up for an HSD, high speed data, install. The customer led me to the brand new computer he had just purchased from a pawn shop, an Apple IIE. I crap you not. This was in 2003. I explained to him that, not only was that computer not new, there was no way I could connect it to the internet, and he should really go back to the pawn shop and return it. He told me they charged him $1000 for it and the policy was no returns. Sad part, the guy was in his 40s. Should have seen Apple IIE in high school. This hurts me so much. Poor guy. Her. Why does my speared sheet look funny? Me. Because you opened it in word. Her. Oh. Or another time when we used to use Netson to her desktop. I was trying to find out where a particular workstation was located so I sent a Netson to the desktop asking for them to call me on my cell. I wait 15 minutes. Nothing. So I send another and wait another 15 minutes. Then I send one every 30 seconds. Eventually I get a panicked phone call at my desk and she tells me that someone is asking her to call a phone number and what do I do? Dot. After I stopped banging my head on the desk I explained everything. Epic. Netsend was the greatest thing ever in college. I have a guy on the line right now who is insisting that his cable modem is making his computer crash. Though the best is still the guy who said he had a virus in his ethernet cable. Red acting while on a support call. Classy. Colon. In my younger days working dial up support. User. I can't get on. Is it closed? Me. I'm sorry. Is what closed? User. The internet. What time does it close? The internet closes at 8 p.m. weekdays. 7 p.m. weekend. That's central time zone. Of course. People in Asia that want to get online have to switch to night shift jobs. My wife once called my cell phone. Me. Hello. Wife. Did you find your cell phone? Me. Me. Yes. When my friend forgets to charge his phone and it dies, I routinely let him know by sing him. Cracks him up every time. I had a girl send me a text once asking if a 2GB memory card is bigger than a 256MB card. I try not to judge people too harshly for not knowing these things, so I replied 1GB equals 1024MB. She texts back no maths for me, just tell me which one to get. Even now, I'm stupefied just thinking about it. I think it brings out the hidden violence in me that I want to find this woman and shake her until numbers fall out of her mouth. Rep, I have a question for you. Me. Okay. Go for it. Rep, my power has been out for the last couple of hours. Silence. Me. That's not really a question. Rep, oh. Yeah. Is that why my computers aren't on? Me. Fasipum. Computers are like birds. If it's dark, they go to sleep. I work at a hardware store and I had someone ask me about glues. I asked what are you gluing? She smirked, paused for a second, and said, Well, I work for a hospital, and we have this training dummy, a male training dummy, an anatomically correct male training dummy, and some interns were, a, horsing around and ripped off the, well, the so called, main feature of said dummy. I could not contain my giggles, and neither could she. Good times. My girlfriend picked up the power adapter to my laptop and said, and I quote wow, your hard drive is heavy, you must have a lot of stuff on it, yeah, frickin' double whammy. Funniest saddest was from my internship supervisor, is, I need you to make a backup of the model product database and store on a disk, it's probably best to use a DVD, me, 
going online to see how big the table is, make a dump of it, is, so is there going to be enough space on a DVD for it all, me, it's only 175 kilobytes, is, blank stir, so will it fit, a little piece of me died that day, he left right after and everyone in the office burst into tears laughing, as we were all programmers and he was our boss. I called my mom who in turn told everyone in the office and everyone else in the family, who then told everyone in their offices. LOLs were heard by all. I was working as a consultant and enterprise CRM system when a customer of mine called me frantically one morning. Our application log file is getting very large this morning it's already at 500 megabytes and I'm afraid it will eat up all the disk space. Knowing this log file usually stays around a few 100k for a 24 hour period. I agreed to drive on over there and investigate. Upon arriving and examining the log file, I saw a recurring unsuccessful login attempt by a particular user over and over again I'm talking about 60 login attempts per second. Without giving too much information, I asked the local IT team if they recognized that username and they said it was one of the girls in their network operations center. I inquired regarding where that was in the building and proceeded to walk down the hall to her office. Upon entering her office I immediately walked Walked over to her desk, picked up her purse from the keyboard, which was hitting enter constantly on the system login screen. I explained to my customer who was quite embarrassed at this point, problem solved and proceeded to leave the building and get back to real work. That one is your fault for not locking her out after 3 attempts. Had a guy that needed to update a program on a proprietary controller on a piece of machinery. The program had to be loaded from an SD card onto the controller. He called to say that he was on the last step of the 15 step process. 1. Turn off device. 2. Insert SD card. ETC. But the program wouldn't update. Couple questions. Blah blah. Is the SD card seated properly? Well. I didn't have an SD card, so I just skipped ahead to step 12 when you don't need it anymore. Fasapum. I attempted to fasa desk, but there's so much junk on my desk that it ended up being a face DS game. This is kind of related. There was a redditor a while back that posted an IMG. Don't remember the caption, but the picture was of his monitor. A screenshot, showing his parents on a webcam chat taking a screenshot of their monitor with a camera. I think it summed up nicely the problem between IT versus non-IT. We had a machine that is connected to a UPS on a shipping line. It runs Windows 2000. Well, apparently the battery in the UPS fried and when I replaced the UPS the system rebooted. Turns out I got a frantic phone call two weeks later, wondering when I was going to finish fixing the machine. I drove all the way back there to see what was going on. Apparently, the instructions taped to the monitor, case, keyboard, screenshot hanging from the rack next to the computer. That showed the username, password and domain fields and what to enter into them were too complicated. In the 6 years since I've worked here that machine had never once crashed or rebooted. I showed the user how to log in, and the machine was fixed. I knew Windows 2000 was solid, but frick. The company I work for was having a used computer sale. They were getting rid of all of their old equipment. This meant that old desktops, HDDs, NICs, RAM, ETC were being sold. A co-worker and I were standing in line and he picked up a couple of 10 stroke 100 NICs in amongst the other stuff he was getting. Well, a lady standing behind us in line overheard us talking about them. She politely asked my friend what they were and what they were used for. He responded that they were for connecting computers together so they could talk with each other. She intently listened to his explanation. We turn back towards the front of the line. Moments later she turns to her friend and asks, What do computers talk about? Poker face. How about the opposite? Bell Canada Tech Support once told me that my internet connection was fine, and they were able to communicate with my modem. Keep in mind that I had already done a bunch of troubleshooting on my end, and had determined that the problem was with the service. I had unplugged the modem when the guy told me he could ping it. I told him it was unplugged. He said that unplugging it from the computer doesn't matter. I told him it that both the power and phone cord were unplugged from the wall. Here's the stupid part on his end. He said are you sure then proceeded to ask me multiple times whether I was sure I had unplugged the right thing from the wall. TL. DR. 
Bell gave our service to someone else, then didn't believe me when I said my internet service was down. Considering the kinds of phone calls he probably gets and some of the posts in this thread I don't blame him for that. I know I'd be pretty skeptical if somebody said they had unplugged something and I was still receiving ping replies from it. Had someone ring up saying that the G key was continually being pressed and they couldn't log in. Got them to tap the G key a few times, reboot, etc. No change. Unplug the keyboard. Still happening. Okay start unplugging USB devices. Halfway through it stops. It was a Microsoft wireless USB dongle. They threw out their old wireless keyboard last night after they shut down. But it was still in range and leaning on the G key. He cracked up at that point. Was quite funny. Haha <laughs> that actually sounds like something I could see anyone doing equals P. Me. Okay so now click on my computer. Them. Now son. How in the heck am I supposed to click on your computer? I actually just remembered a second one, but I am posting this on behalf of my dad, who was a sysadmin at one of the two big telcos in Canada. My dad is sitting in a meeting with some of the district managers and a few chief officers. It was a project planning meeting where my dad was a subject matter expert on a system they were planning to decommission. I cannot recall if it was the CIO or CTO that turned to my dad and asked, Hey, Pete, how do I keep my hard drive from filling up so often? My dad responds, straight faced with, oh, just use smaller text in your word documents, c, i, t, o, oh sweet, thanks, Pete. Junior admin for a neurological practice here, I don't necessarily get stupid questions, not any that I feel would tickle you pink, or even half pink, but I will point out this as my least favorite aspect of IT. Here's someone walking towards my office, adjust things on my desk, hey, IT guy, I have a problem, okay, tell me about it, I usually buckle in my chair at this point, verbatim, well, I'm getting this thing with that program we use, it's keeping me from accessing my login to get into where I put my username and password, and it's also telling me that I have the wrong password. I went ahead and deleted the thingy on my screen so that I would reset the user settings configuration. WTF. No really WTF. And it still gives me the same error. I wish I could falcon punch my co-workers sometimes. Common neurological practice. Lock eye contact. Deadpan. Well, it shouldn't take a brain surgeon to figure this one out. Sunglasses are optional. Can you tell me what my AIM password is? Hunter 2. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.